Conduit is the perfect legend for area control, area denial, and is one of the best legends for resetting after any close team fights. In essence, she is the ultimate support legend, cranked up to 200%. So naturally, huge thank you to EA for inviting me to play this season 19 early, and of course for sponsoring this video. So here's a guide on how to play the new Apex legend Conduit. Conduit's passive, Savior Speed, allows Conduit to run towards her teammates 23% faster than any of her legends. By sprinting while looking towards a teammate while being more than 50 meters away from them, as in anywhere longer than the range of your tactical, for about 3 seconds. Conduit will gain a permanent speed boost from 299 velocity to 388 velocity for as long as she runs in the direction of the teammate. When trying to activate it, you'll know how long you have until it starts by this nifty icon on your HUD. The passive does not slow down if you get shot at or if you take damage, and it has a small grace period that allows you to jump around or dodge a little bit if you take any heat. The passive only stops giving you speed if you stop sprinting, stop looking at a teammate for long enough, or get within 25 meters of that teammate. The passive is very useful with allowing you to stay closely behind your teammates who might have more movement abilities than you do, or who are just playing better at running and sliding than you are. If you have some movement skills, you can combine the speed boosts from your passive with other movement techniques to get a little bit farther, such as wall hopping or even super gliding, as these movement abilities send you farther the higher your current velocity is. This is especially useful when you know that you are about to lose your speed boost, for example if you know you're going to have to look away from your teammate or if there's something in the way that you know that you'll need to climb over. If you are mid-slide or mid-air once you lose a speed boost, you'll still hold on to that added velocity until you hit the ground again, meaning it's in your best interest to be mid-air when it disappears. In addition to reaching your teammates faster, thanks to being a support legend, Conduit can also open support men's and crafter teammates' banners before bringing them back, which is especially useful this very season because as of season 19, any teammates that are respawned now come back with the same level armor that they had when they died, their weapons, as long as they aren't care package weapons, without attachments, and even two stacks of ammo for those weapons as well. Conduit's tactical Radiant Transfer is an amazingly strong tool for resetting after a fight, or just for adding a critical extra pool of shield health to your enemies during a team fight. Activating your tactical ability will grant you with a shield charging status, where for the next 8 seconds you will regain a set of temporary shields, healing up at about 10 shields per second, which adds up to about 80 shields over the entire duration of the tactical. These shields will only recover as much as you can have when at full shields. Taking damage will pause the healing for a brief moment before resuming the healing at the same rate for the rest of the charge up period. The pause does not affect the length of the charge up period, meaning this 8 second period will still tick down and you will charge up less shields overall. After these first 8 seconds are up, you will enter a second phase where your shields no longer will passively heal up, but they will stay completely static unless they get broken by damage or you heal them up using shield healing items. These temporary static shields are highlighted in green, and unless removed by other circumstances, they will stay on your legend for the next 21 seconds. Whichever phase of the tactical you or a teammate is on, and how much is left of said phase, can be seen above your healing item in the bottom left, with this useful icon for charging up, and this one for when your shield has stopped charging and you're in the static phase. If you are within the 50 meter range of a teammate, you can also see another icon when looking at them. By activating your tactical while looking at a teammate, both you and your teammate will receive the charge up status for the next 8 seconds, followed by the very same static shield phase afterwards. But unlike your own heals, your teammate will be healed at a much faster rate, adding to well over 125 shield heals over the 8 second duration. Conduit's tactical can be activated through the floor, through walls or other obstacles, as long as your teammates are within range and of course field of view. If you do activate your tactical when you aren't looking at a teammate or if they're too far away, the second they get within your line of sight, or your range, it will automatically apply to them as well. To clarify, healing your teammates does not result in a slower shield heal for the conduit. No matter the situation, the charge up phase will always heal at, I think it's about 20 shield health per second for teammates, and about 10 shield heals per second for the conduit. If a teammate gets knocked, the shield status disappears. If the conduit is knocked, the shield status will remain on our teammates. Radiance Transfer has a 21 second cooldown and starts as soon as the charge up phase is done, meaning that you in theory could constantly keep it up with about half of a second of downtime, though unless you and your teammates don't have enough shields, you're better off with holding on to the tactical until a fight actually begins. If your teammates ahead of you start taking damage, 
this is the best time to use the tactical as they'll be able to step behind cover and heal up their shields without having to risk using a shield battery and having their hands down. And depending on your teammates, it might be in your best interest to communicate that they have the Radiant Transfer on them so they know not to pop a shield item for no reason and instead feel motivated to apply more pressure to the enemy. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the tactical is also an amazing comeback tool. Let's say you've finished a fight and one or two of your teammates' armors are cracked. Maybe even one of them are knocked. If you have a full armor, you could drop it on the ground for one of your teammates to pick up, maybe the knocked one, while using the tactical on yourself and then the teammate who might have a broken armor. This allows the whole team to reset much faster and have some extra health or shields in order to deal with a potential third party, which generally speaking will be on the way. And if you haven't used it already, resetting also goes hand in hand with her ultimate, which is a great tool to hold off the enemy team from pushing up any farther. Conduit's ultimate energy barricade fires 7 shield jabs that slow and damage enemies that get close enough, dealing 10 damage and slowing the enemy once per tick every half a second or so. The jammers are really annoying to deal with as in addition to slowing the enemy, they will completely kill a slide and cause the enemy to dead slide and get stuck on the ground in the process. And thanks to each shield jammer affecting anything within a sphere around the actual jammer, any player trying to perform movement to get past them will simply be slowed midair and get stuck. The placement of these seven shield jammers can take several shapes and forms depending on the environment surrounding where the ultimate is deployed, but they will always try to be placed in a V shape when you look straight down and a straight 50 meter wall if you look straight up. The energy barricade has a ridiculously long range as well and can reach targets up to 80 meters away if you fire it with a slight arc, making it a great tool not only to hold off enemies around you, but also a great tool to fire off into a crowded area or into a position that you want to see. Even better, if you are chasing an enemy team that you know have to pass through a choke or a tight spot, this means that you can throw your ultimate ahead of them to cut off their exit. That being said, since aiming the ultimate upwards leads to it stretching out into a single file row of shield jammers, this means it doesn't necessarily have too much use against enemies who know that they can simply get through the wall by either shooting one of the jammers or walking through at the cost of some of your health and exposing yourself for a few seconds. If you want to ensure that the enemies don't have a chance of making it through your ultimate, make sure to use it in a corridor or a smaller choke, as the shield jammers bunching up into a V-shape means the enemy needs to break all of them to make it through unharmed. And it's worth noting that while the damage or slow effect doesn't stack from being within the range of the several shield jammers, it will be impossible to make it through without a significant slow and chunk to your health. Make sure to pay close attention to what's going on with your ultimate at all times and be ready to follow up on any enemy that happens to pass through your trap. Ever place it where you think somebody will pass through, where you know they're forced to pass through, or somewhere behind you to seal off one angle and make sure that the enemies won't catch you off guard. It's worth noting that if you are inside where the ultimate's upwards trajectory will be blocked, the jammers will all crowd in one place instead. And at the time of recording this video, some of the jammers seem to despawn despite the game suggesting that all of them should appear. So so that might be a bug. Each and every shield jammer will take 4 seconds to prime, after which they will stay up for an entire minute, unless destroyed by an enemy. Each jammer has 250 health and can be destroyed by gunfire and crypto's EMP. If you try placing the energy barricade around a Watson pylon, it will eat any jammers that land within its range, and if you try to place it on a Gibraltar bubble, the jammers will not stick to the bubble and instead slide off and land to the side instead. Both Gibraltar and Rampart can block the effect of a jammer by cutting off the line of sight between them and the jammer with their bubble or their amplified barrier. The ultimate cooldown starts as soon as it pops and takes 2 minutes and 30 seconds to charge up again. And even though she has some ability, it's clear that Conduit belongs in the back lines. When it comes to positioning, you want to keep her either in the middle of her team or in the very far back, keeping an eye on her teammates' health and being ready to support them with the tactical or even running up using the passive if necessary. Make sure to keep an eye on your teammates' health and status at all times and if necessary, close the gap as soon as possible. Due to her position, in the mid to back lines, I'd always recommend conduit and support players in general to play close to mid-range weapons such as SMGs, assault rifles, and if you're going for a more passive playstyle as a team, you could also consider running marksman rifles or even sniper rifles, and if you are using conduit to support your offensive-oriented team, you can even get away with running a shotgun for once you use your passive to close that gap. And that's a real quick way to play conduit. I hope this was a ton of help, and if you want to get even better at Apex, you should definitely check out the video on the screen. Huge thank you to PeachFPS and Mufasa Screams for helping me out with testing Conduit and recording this footage. And of course, thank you again EA for inviting me to the playtest. And of course, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out.